When a game is made by the creator of Harvest Moon, it shows. Like its farm-friendly siblings, Little Dragon's Cafe is all about completing simple yet rewarding tasks, but it's also ready to subvert your expectations. Whether that means ditching the concept of currency, letting you stay up all night without punishment, or slowing the pace to a crawl, Little Dragon's Cafe is its own beast. With pleasing storybook graphics, a meditative pace, and dozens of hours of gameplay, it still hasn't ended after 40 hours, Little Dragon's Cafe is content to entrance more than entertain. In fact, it may be the only game of its type where there's no money at all. Just better ingredients, baby. In a way, it's refreshing that you're not forced into anxiety-inducing decisions each day. You don't have to decide whether to woo a romantic partner or mine deeper into the caves. You simply collect ingredients and improve the cafe's menu. You won't upgrade tools or attend festivals, but you will learn a whole lot of recipes. And that's the crux of Little Dragon Cafe's progression system. Upgrading your menu is easy. All you have to do is explore new areas or talk to your employees. But cooking those recipes is a different story. You have to use the best ingredients and nail the timing on the fairly difficult minigames to raise your bed and breakfast's reputation. A more reputable B&B means more guests, which is apparently good, even though you're not earning any money from them. The story is total nonsense, in the best way possible, thanks to a slew of weird, unshakable details. Take for instance the dragon's manure, it's a precious resource that speeds up crop production. You collect it right from the dragon's bed, sometimes while they're still sleeping in it. Or the old wizard who teleports into the house tells the children their comatose mother is half-dragon, then decides to move in, leaving the unsupervised kiddos to their own horrifying paternal conclusions. Despite the silly and fairly freaky plot, everything else in Little Dragon's Cafe feels designed to put you at ease. For example, unlike virtually every other farming sim, this one doesn't punish you for burning the candle at both ends. You can stay out until 4 or 5 a.m. and you'll still only sleep in about an hour extra. But you shouldn't, and the reasons are simple, it doesn't help you, and it's not that fun. No matter how many ingredients you collect or supreme dishes you cook, the plot progresses at its own pace. If you're trying to complete the story in record time, you'd be better off going to bed as soon as you've stocked up your kitchen and reached your story goals for the day. When you get stuck, those goals can be helpfully checked in the menu. They range from the slightly obscure, like check in on the cafe after lunch, to the explicit, like collect recipe fragments by talking to Rosetta and the hunter in the forest. For the most part, these hints aren't necessary, but they're nice to reference when you're stuck. As you nurture your dragon, he'll grow and help you reach areas around the map that were previously inaccessible. But even when the map grows to full size, exploring it is never as fun as it should be. That's because some of the tasks you'll repeat hundreds or even thousands of times just don't feel quite right. You often get stuck in the ledges that appear as though they should be easily jumped over. Hunting with your dragon especially is a pain because you need to get close to the beast, then press the right button when the prompt arises. Problem is, by the time you're close enough, those beasts have probably seen you, and if they do, they'll tackle you stealing one of your dishes. Of course, after putting significant hours into exploring and gathering, you'll have so many ingredients that you probably won't care if you lose a few. With a breezy pace and a comically weird story, Little Dragon's Cafe is a unique take on farming sims. Cooking meals, establishing an inn, and the anxiety-free pace is relaxing, but its management mechanics have been watered down just a bit too much and result in stakes so low that a lot of it becomes meaningless. For more on farm simulating games, check out our updated review of Stardew Valley, and for everything else, stick with IGN.